Hey everyone, so this week I got three high paying side gig jobs with no experience. Wanna see how I did it? Watch this video. I'm Mike Black and I'm giving up everything during a global pandemic. The world economy has been crippled by COVID, but with the right mindset, we can get through this. I believe right now is one of the best times to reinvent yourself. And so I'm putting everything on the line to prove it. This is the million dollar comeback. You have to just put stuff out there. <laughs> it's starting to really hit me. I don't know what else to tell you. Just a lot more work to do. Sick of being broke. You want to talk about bean life? Dude, bean life. So in last week's video, you saw I was really struggling financially. Please hit the like button and subscribe button. I only have five bucks, please. <laughs> but then I got a job with a law firm as a virtual assistant. I just like to be helpful if I can. I mentioned that I had three interviews. I applied to 10 different jobs in one night and the next day I woke up and I had three interviews. Well, I actually landed all three jobs total. So now I have two jobs as a virtual assistant that pay $25 an hour, $25 an hour, and one job as a telemarketer that pays $20 an hour plus commission. Now I know how much money I need to make to survive. No more flipping couches. No more couches! <laughs> So now I wanna show you the strategies that I use to land these jobs so you can go and do it too. Me and Brock are on the sticks today. We're the camera crew. We got Deirdre down, we got J. Will down, we got Mankata down. It's just me and Brock, baby. What? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna show you how I get these interviews and kind of like break it down. So getting a job, whether you're a freelancer or you're looking for full-time employment, really breaks down into two buckets. The first is how to get an interview, and the second is how to win the interview. Now this applies to both freelancers and people that are looking for full-time employment. So let's start with how to get the interview. For me, the way I was able to get these is one I'd call it like profile management. So like LinkedIn and Upwork profile management. Frame yourself as the expert, which we'll talk about. And then the third one, do something different and get them to really know you. So to get the interview, it's really, really important that you optimize your portfolio and your profile to really show that you're an expert in something very specific. So for me, what I did is I framed my LinkedIn and my Upwork as an expert at social media marketing. All right, so I'm on my LinkedIn. I wanna show you really quick um, how to actually optimize your profiles on LinkedIn and Upwork. So it's really important to communicate what you do and who you do it for. Now you can see here, I'm a content strategist and social media marketer at Scott Social. I'm not a line cook at Crumb Kitchen. We have here content strategist and social media marketer, Scott Social. We help econ gr brands grow online. Now Scott Social was a, uh, a marketing company that I like just threw up when I had first started. I started playing around with TikTok and all this other stuff and I was going to start a social media marketing company, which I, I didn't end up pursuing. But again, it was very clear who I, what I did and who I did it for. People come to my profile and they're like, okay, maybe this person knows some things about marketing. If you want a quick peek of Scott Social, bam, Scott Social, baby. Scott Social, we got the president, Mike Scott. We help e-com companies. It's a solid little site I threw up in two hours. Um, but again, that's how you wanna go about optimizing your profile for those of you that do have some experience. And if you don't have experience, it's fine once you start your company to throw it up immediately on here and tell people exactly what you do and who you do it for. So now I wanna show you my Upwork profile. Now, if you look at it now, this is for what I'm currently doing. I'm working with e-commerce brands doing paid advertising. Before it was, it was, um, it was optimized for social media marketing and being a virtual assistant. I'll just walk through kind of what this is because this is like a really, really good profile. I wrote a senior Facebook and Instagram advertising expert for e-commerce stores. What I do, who I do it for. Now, by the way, I'm using someone else to do all the fulfillment. I'm not using anyone else but this one individual. So it's okay that I put all these things in the profile that are pretty much about him and his portfolio. I have a call to action, let's chat. And I also say here are the secondary things that we do. But the main thing that we do is paid advertising for Facebook and Instagram. When I apply to a job, they know that I'm an expert when it comes to Facebook and Instagram marketing for e-commerce stores. And again, really it's the person that's gonna be doing the work for me. 
Um, so then I put our growth framework. So this is like our secret sauce. This is what we do. This shows experience and builds credibility. This also builds credibility. So these are like client results the individual has that I'm going to be working with. Wow, we built this company to $2 million in revenue, in monthly revenue. People look at that and they go, I'm also an e-commerce brand. Maybe they can do that for me. Any type of results you have, case studies, you want to put that in your portfolio. And then a call to action. Let's talk. Let's do a 20-minute uh, strategy call. So again, if you have a lot of stuff in your profile, in your portfolio, make sure you really flaunt that stuff on this page. But if you don't have a lot of experience, you can go and find someone who does and leverage their entire portfolio with permission to go and put it on your profile as long as you only use that individual. I'm almost like a salesperson for this guy, but I'm building my business pretty much around his talent. He'll be doing the fulfillment. All right, that's it. I hope this video doesn't suck, Brock. Have fun editing it. Okay, so that's how I went about like framing myself as an expert. Now the next step, which is probably the most important, is you wanna do something that stands out. You don't wanna do what everyone does, which is just apply. You want to give the person a reason to think that you're different. Be different, stand out, and add value. So for me, I applied to 10 jobs on, on Upwork and I got three of them that pay really well. That's a 30% conversion rate, that's pretty good. The reason I was able to do that is because of this one. It actually wasn't even because of these first two. What I did was I created Loom videos. So let me show you some Loom videos I recorded for some jobs that I had applied to on Upwork. Hey, how's it going? I just wanted to shoot this quick video because I'm very interested in working with you. R super cool this is your first time hiring a virtual assistant. So what I'd love to do is help you with your day-to-days, take care of your email, help you with scheduling. Um, and I have a marketing background, so I could also help with things like social media marketing. So what I wanna do is kind of answer some of these questions. Have you worked with an attorney before? No, but I do have uh, some friends that are attorneys. Um, so I know a bit about that world. I've also uh, hired attorneys um, more on the corporate side. Um, do you have any questions about the job description? I do have questions that I'd love to answer, uh, ask those on a call. But I'm just curious like what exactly the day-to-day -day looks like how many hours are required, um, what you need the most help with, and how it can be the most valuable to, um, to the team. I send this video in with the application when I apply. Submit the link with the Loom video so they can just go and watch it with your application. People like when you do this. It showed, one, that I was a good communicator, two, that I was a real human being, and three, it cut through all the clutter. You have to understand how challenging it is for someone to be interviewing a bunch of people in recruiting. Recruiting is such a bitch. It is such a bitch recruiting good talent. <laughs> Brock's laughing because he knows what we've been dealing with. This is how I started off. I just wanted to shoot this quick video so you can get to know me better a lot more quickly. And then I go, ba 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 ba. They can hear I communicate, et cetera. So if you can do something. Exactly, ba 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 ba. I, exactly, word for word. After that, ba 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 ba. Got it. If you can do that very quickly and concisely, keep it to like two minutes, you can save the interviewer a lot of time. That's already a win for them. They're gonna be like, wow. And then in that video, if, if you can figure out a way to add value to the person in some way, shape or form, that is also a huge win and can convert higher in actually getting an interview. What's funny is I didn't go in detail on anything. Nothing I talked about was like really in depth, like, hey, like, like. In depth? <laughs> in depth. Depth. Um, depth. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know, there's a lot of words I say really poorly. <laughs> depth. Depth is one of them. It's too much effort to do the pfft. <laughs> or how would just go too depth? Much effort. Too much effort. So that's a guy that's pulling a hundred hour a week. <laughs> hey, there's some things I gotta cut down on to, to work those hundred hours. And one of them is spending a microsecond going depth versus depth. So now I wanna talk about how to win the interview. And the trick to doing this is to approach it as a problem solver. How do you win the interview? How do you close the deal? So you need to be a consultant. If you're a freelancer and someone's hiring you as a freelancer, really what you are is a consultant. You're a contractor that's coming in to solve whatever problem it is. So the first step is really understanding what are their problems? What are the issues that they need help with? The second thing is you need to run the interview.
So what ends up happening in these interviews, all three of these, I talk very little and they talk a lot, but I help them solve their problems. And a lot of the times you'll realize they actually don't know what their problem is. One person that interviewed me for a virtual assistant role thought their problem was that they needed someone on staff all the time doing text message marketing. And what they realized is really they needed to set up email campaigns with MailChimp and they needed a lot of other things handled, but it wasn't the original problem they thought they needed help with. Which by the way, I've never used any of these softwares before so I had to learn it. And then she hired me for $25 an hour to do what we discussed on the call. The last piece, again, I, I said it earlier, but really focus on their pain point. Now for the telemarketing role, the problem that I was being hired to solve is get more business, grow the business, bring in leads. So I asked questions like, what are you currently doing to bring in more leads? With telemarketing, how long have you been doing it? What do conversion rates look like? Why is your current campaign not running as successful as it potentially could be? How do we make this successful? What do you need the most help with? And as I asked more and more and more questions, I realized their problem was actually at a top level with branding. And then as I've been working with him, we've had by far the highest converting telemarketing campaigns that they've ever had. So it's important, really understand their pain point, focus on that pain point. So that's how I was able to convert 30% of my applications into offers. So I hope that was really helpful. Now, I was able to land three jobs this past week, but the problem is I don't get paid until next week. I still owe Isaac $250 for last month's rent. And I was like, oh shoot, I don't have any money for food. I don't have any money to do anything. And I need to get bus passes to go to the office. What am I gonna do? Isaac lent me his car today. Let's do it. That car life, baby. <laughs> We're working our way out of bean life. Now I'm set long term with some jobs, but in the short term, I still don't have any money. Bean life. So I went over to Isaac and I was like, hey, would you be cool with lending me your car and I'll do food delivery and in return, I'll give you the majority of everything I make. Joel's gotta eat, we gotta get this to Joel, we gotta hurry. And turns out I'm the best delivery driver in Austin. Oh, Mike's your driver? You mean, you mean Mike Black? Luck, lucky. This is all about speed. It's just focus on getting from point A to point B as quickly as possible. Person orders their food, bam. How the hell did you get here so quick? God damn it, I took a wrong turn again. They're blown away. They all said it. You can listen to them. <laughs> Hannah, what do you think about my delivering skills? Best delivery driver ever. You heard it. The best delivery driver ever. Not even in Austin, this is like national, I think it might be global. I wonder if anyone that I deliver food for at some point is ever just gonna be like, you're not a good delivery driver. Is that ever gonna happen? I don't think so. People in Austin, that's all they're saying. Mike Black, best delivery driver in Austin. I'll take it, I'll take it. I'm not saying it, they're saying it. Be best delivery driver ever. Best delivery driver ever. This man's got, got what it takes. You hear that? Best delivery driver in the business. I'll deliver it, I'll deliver it faster than anyone's ever delivered it before. These people are just blown away. Just say um, that I'm the best delivery driver in Austin. All right, we're here with Sam. We got her her Coke. Uh, what's up, Sam? Oh my God, you got here so fast. You're the fastest delivery driver, like, ever. Uh, you know what? Everyone's been saying that. No way. <laughs> I was just totally crushing it. Crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. I don't care what the, the size of the delivery is. $2, $3, $50, I'll deliver it. We're heading over to Burger King. I'm not gonna comment. You know what? I am gonna comment. <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? You're getting Burger King delivered? Are you kidding me? Fuck. This person's definitely not leaving a tip. Man, I've had 600 calories today, and I have this Burger King right next to me, and like, I wouldn't even touch that. I'm not even gonna steal your food, Anthony. There's fries there. I'm not even touching your food. It's gross. We got people their food. That's what I do. I get people their food. Talk to Anthony. He's like, dude. How do you deliver so fast? Best delivery driver. I knew I was gonna get a good tip. He picked a high class, fast food restaurant, tipped me five bucks. Great person, great individual, makes good life decisions. So delivering food was a lot of fun. If you have a car, it's a great way to make money. Um, I don't really wanna do it anymore. I don't really want to do it anymore though. I, I give up my title as the best delivery driver in Austin. I, I'm retired. I don't want to do any more deliveries. <laughs> I hate driving. I hate traffic. I'm not a fan of driving. But on top of that, like I'm working these jobs that I'm, I spent like 30, 
40 hours a week working all these jobs for other people, then I'm also delivering food, then I'm also trying to work on my business, then also doing MDC. So it's like all this stuff and I'm like sitting there driving, I'm like I really wish I was working on my business right now. Now on top of having a really bad financial situation, there's a lot of other things that aren't going well. I've been living very unhealthy. We're living good, baby. We're living good. I feel like I'm better than everyone else. All the peasants that aren't living bean life. This is really unhealthy. I've been doing this for the past month. And it's starting to mint starting to mess with me mentally. I'm getting like brain fog from it. Uh, so, can you tell? <laughs> can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know, if you're on a budget, you, don't, you shouldn't eat beans. Not only is it really unhealthy for you, it tastes like garbage. This is important. You can buy healthy food that's inexpensive. The only reason I'm doing this is because I don't have anywhere to really cook this stuff, okay? Now back to the rant. <laughs> I also have developed athlete's foot on my left foot. You wanna know why I have an athlete's foot. These showers are fucking disgusting. I'm not using that one today. I also lost my shampoo and my body wash. I accidentally left it in the shower and I guess someone threw it away. So the past five, six days, I haven't been using any shampoo or um, body wash. If, if you're wondering why I've been wearing a hat, it's because I haven't been using shampoo. Like, <laughs> I haven't freaking washed my hair in like a week. Yeah, I'm a disgusting dirt bag right now. We got athlete's foot. We're fucking not using shampoo. We're not using soap. Total dirt bag, <laughs> no money. <laughs> what, what's even the transition for this? <laughs> for the first time, my bank actually overdrew. The freaking laundry machines at the RV park, they don't hit my, my debit card until a couple days later and I forgot about that and my account went to negative four dollars. So I'm really struggling right now. Like this has been like a financial struggle, a health struggle. Um, I was not expecting this to take this long for me to get out of this situation. And this has probably been a recurring theme through these videos, but I'm glad that you're all seeing this because this is what it takes. When you look at people and wonder how they got to where they're at, this is what they did. Maybe they didn't eat as bad as I'm eating. Maybe they weren't as unhealthy as I've been. Maybe they didn't struggle as much as I did. They definitely didn't smell as bad as you. <laughs> they definitely don't smell like <laughs> like I do. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, they put in the work. They made the sacrifices. What you guys don't see in these videos is I'm putting in 100 hours a week right now. 30 hours of that is being put on MDC alone. That gives me another 70 hours to do nothing but work. I want you to know, whoever you are right now, whatever you're going through, whatever your struggle is, as long as you and your family have your health, there's nothing to be upset about. You're winning, I'm f***ing losing, but this is part of the game, so I'm actually winning. <laughs> you gotta enjoy this stuff. This is the stuff people don't see. This is what it takes. Just keep working, keep getting through things, keep your mindset right. That's it for this video. We need Mankata back and J Will and Deirdre. <laughs> putting out fires and then putting out the fires that are on top of the ashes of the fires that you just put out. <laughs> Everyone that's watching right now is probably like, there was no value. <laughs> What's up everybody? It's your boy Mankata. Sorry Mike, I know you're eating beans and tuna and stuff like that and I, I know that sucks, but uh, I gotta eat man, so. No napkins? <laughs> I hope you're having fun, because we're not. <laughs> oh, by the way, hit the like button. Subscribe, it helps us out a lot when you hit the like button. And click the notification bell so you never miss an update when we post a new video. But hey, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Word for word, best delivery driver in Austin. I'm not saying it, they're saying it.